Um, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, uh, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel scattered abroad through the four corners of the earth. A hearty shalakit, like double honors to the elect elders of the house of David that's been in this truth for decades and decades, patiently waiting for the second coming of Yahweh Shah. Um, a hearty shalom to all of the mighty men of the Lord who are out there on the highways and byways, pushing this truth, magnifying the ministry, and presenting their body as a living sacrifice. And shalom to all of the men that may not be out there on the highways and byways as of yet, but they're working on it, they're getting built up in the spirit, they're praying, they're fasting, they're studying, they're being diligent and abounding in the work of the Lord. Shalom, shalom. And shalom to all of the aqua out there, the sisters out there, married and unmarried, keeping the commandments, reverencing her husbands, being submissive, and following every good work of our righteous foremother. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, all yasha Allah. Have a mighty feast of 11 bread. Lord willing, everybody is um, turning up in the spirit. You understand, reading the accounts, not just indulging in wine, right, and having fun, but actually going into that accounts of our forefathers, getting built up in this thing, man. Come, and let's get, like we always start, we're gonna start with Acts chapter 18 and four. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 18 and verse four. Book of Acts chapter 18 and verse four. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Shabbat and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And it's our job to reason on every Sabbath, to do these lessons, to persuade Israel who are living in this Gentile lifestyle to come back to Yahweh Shabbat man. Stop painting Easter eggs, man, uh, uh, tomorrow, man. Right, and come out of the damn Easter egg hunt and wearing that three-piece suit and keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, man. It's our job to get you to keep the Passover to come back to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh man, in the last days. And the Jews who know that they're Israel to persuade them to come back to Yahweh Shah or really enduring this truth. Right. And we can only do that through what? Philippians chapter 4 and 13. The book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things. No, some things. I, I can, can do, do all, all things. things. Just two things. I, I can, can do, do all things. things. Right? Through Hamashiach, which strengthened in me. So the Lord strengthens us, and he's the reason that we're able to do these, do these lessons, that we're able to keep these high holy days, the reason that we're in this truth, and we're able to uh, teach sound doctrine according to the will and power and foreknowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Let's go to Exodus chapter 14 and 1. Right? So it's to really go to Acts chapter 12 and 1. Start at that. Right? So we didn't, you know, we're just going in the spirit. We're going into the exodus of our forefathers, right? This is the, um, the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, right? So we're going, going right into it. Read that, King. 12 and 1. It's the book of Acts, chapter 12 and verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Right. And he killed James. And he did what? And he, he killed, killed James. James. Right, he killed James. James was one of the first martyrs. Right for Yahweh Shah. Go on. The brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Right. Then were the days of unleavened bread. What the Lord say? Then were the days of unleavened bread. During these days, we had massive persecution. During the days of unleavened bread. Huh? During the days of unleavened bread, we rejoiced as well. Huh? Due to Yahweh Shah being our sacrifice and us leaving Egypt. So you can read about the days of unleavened bread, even in the New Testament, for you Christians who celebrate Easter, man. Right? It's going to tell you that. Go on. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four court courtians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now it says Easter. We know that's not talking about white man Easter. Right? That's the Pesach in the Greek. And we're going to pull it up so brothers know. It's not talking about Easter egg bunnies and damn wearing that nasty suit, man, and going to Sunday church, man, with your great grandmother. So bring that up. All right. Strong's G, 3957. Pascha. Pascha. Right? That's what it says. But it's really Pesach or Pascha. It says the Pascha sacrifice, which was accustomed to be offered from the people's deliverance of old from Egypt. The Paschal lamb, the lamb, the Israelites were accustomed to slay and eat on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, the first month of their year, in memory of the day on which their fathers, preparing to depart from Egypt, were bidden by God to slay and eat a lamb and to sprinkle their doorposts with its blood, that the destroying angel, seeing the blood, might pass over their dwellings Hamashiach crucified 
it's likened to the slain Paschal Lamb. Right, the Paschal Supper, the Paschal Feast, the Feast of Passover, extending from the 14th to the 20th. Son is the Babylonian Assyrian tongue of the word a bit, right? So even in the New Testament, you have to go to the Greek. Otherwise, you'd be celebrating Easter like the Christian church, man. So it says, then were the days of unleavened bread. Let's go to Exodus chapter 14 and 1. So that Paschal lamb is for our deliverance out of Egypt, right? Real quick before you get that, go to uh, Psalm 77 and 5. Right, Psalm chapter 77 and verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 77 and verse 5. 77 and verse 5. I have considered the days of old. I have what? I have considered the days of old. I'm worried about the here and now. I have considered the days of old. Yeah, you hear people say that, man. I'm, I live in the here and now. I just live in the moment. <clears throat> I just see into the future, man. No, the Lord said I have considered the days of old, man. Read on. The years of ancient times. Yeah, not just 1980s, man. It's not just talking about Harriet Tubman times and Martin Luther King times, man, the civil rights movement. The ancient times is 2000 BC, 1445 BC, right? These are the ancient times, man, of our forefathers being delivered by the Most High out of Egypt. Read on. I call to remembrance my song in the night. And your song in the night is what? This truth, this knowledge, right? How the Most High delivered your forefathers, the wonderful acts of Yahweh Bash and Abishai. These are the wonderful songs and the statutes that we recall in this nighttime. It's not speaking about thinking about a song you heard in the radio, man. This is that song that the 144,000 know. Right? I call to remembrance my song in the night. Go on. I commune with my own heart. And my spirit made diligent search. I know I made a lukewarm search. And my spirit made diligent search. I commune, meaning I meditate on what my forefathers have done. Or what the Most High has done, man. You got to think about these things, man, during the Feast of Eleventh Bread. You got to visualize the Red Sea being split open, man. I was talking to brothers. Our, our forefathers was up all night, man, in the Exodus, man. Slew the lamb at sundown, death of the firstborn at midnight. And they was out all night, man, going through the Red Sea. Right? It says that we left tomorrow after the Passover. Meaning that morning time when the sun was coming up, we left with a high end, man. You got to meditate. That's endurance right there. Fighting the flesh, uh, uh, fighting the spirit till the sun comes up. All of these things are spiritual when you're dealing with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Removing leaven. And these are the things that you got to think about, man. Not just uh, uh, drinking the damn wine, man. And taking shots of whatever liquor doesn't have leaven in it, man. It's about remembering what your forefathers have done, man. So go to Exodus 14 and 1. Let's get right into it. The book of Exodus, chapter 14 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pi-Hah-Hirah, between Megal and the sea, over against baal Zephon, before it shall, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. I want you to start at 13 and 17. It's lucky. Exodus 13 and verse 17. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that the Most High led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for the Most High said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Yeah, when you look at a map, brothers know where the Philistines land is, right? South, south, uh, uh, west of Judea, right? You got the five cities of the Philistines. And if you look on the map, you can see where Ramesses is, it's a straight shot into the promised land. It's a straight shot. You go right over and you in. The Lord could have did that, but he's telling you he didn't do that because he wanted to build up our nation. There, give me Judges chapter 3 and 1. He said, let's to repent the people when they see war. Our people wasn't ready for war, man. They weren't ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these iron chariots of the Canaanites and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Philistines. So you have to teach them laws, teach them commandments, get them built up so when they inherit the promised land, they come in completely perfected by the most up. So read uh, Judges 3 and 1, and the Lord does that. Judges 3 and 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel to by- To do what? To prove Ooh. Israel. The Lord could have got rid of these nations, man. The most I could have destroyed all of the Jebusites. All of the Canaanites. I tell you that in Wisdom of Solomon, the 11th chapter, man. How the most I could have easily took them out. But he left them there to prove Israel, man. Go on. By them, even as many of Israel, 
as had not known all the wars of Canaan. See that? Because you had a generation coming into the promised land who didn't fight against Og, who didn't fight against Sihon, who didn't fight against these Canaanite kings. They didn't have no idea how to use the sword, shield, and buckler. So the Lord left these nations there just so we can destroy them and learn how to use weapons and set up our military to fight against them. That's what, a, so how does the Lord love everybody? When he literally left a few nations there to be a punching bag, to be a sparring weapon, man. Huh? The Lord, he's not dealing with everybody. Read on. Verse two, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war. To what? To, to teach, teach them, them war. war. To teach them kisses. To teach, to teach them, them war. The Lord set up nations and reserved them in the promised land just so we can fight against them so we can know how to chop off their head. How to thrust them through right, right? Ah, oh, I didn't get it right the first time. Then the Lord sent more nations. Then you slice and say, okay, now we're learning war. So you're killing these Canaanites slowly and surely so you can know how to go to war and toe to toe. You understand that? That's why he left those nations. One more point. And that's why he didn't allow us to go straight into the uh, promised land, right? You got to kill. Right, to build on what the brother was saying, you can get Judges chapter 2 and verse 10. Judges 2 and verse 10. And also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation. That's that other generation that the brother was bringing up. Because that first generation, they seen the signs. They seen the wonders. They seen all of the things that the Lord did. But this new generation, they didn't see. Read. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works. Right, they didn't see all of the works of the Heavenly Father, man. Because right. the Father manifested himself by his works to the generation that was of old, you understand? But it came a new generation that didn't see all the signs and the wonders, the chariots, right? Damn splitting of the sea and all of the wonders, right? The heavenly father, read. Nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the, ch and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served by them. All right, you can rush right there. You got it. Come. That's right. Let's go back to Exodus 13 and uh, 18. The book of Exodus chapter 13 and verse 18. But Yahweh led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Can you pull that word up in the Hebrew, harnessed out? We're going to go into that so brothers know what that means. Read that again. It means, it, when it says harness, it means we went out war ready, right? That's what it means. We went out and rank, even on, uh, on certain footnotes of your Bible, it says they went out rank by five, they went out rank by tens. You went up harnessed, but you went out in order. We're going to see if they, I believe that's what the goes to in the Hebrew when you look it up. On Exodus chapter 13. Battle already. Ba right, right. So here's the word. Read that again. Exodus 13 and 18. The book of Exodus chapter 13 and verse 18. But the most high that the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up harness. Went up what? Went, went up, up harness. harness. Now that word harness, when you look it up on the concordance, if you got a concordance, it's H2570. It says in battle array, Array for a battle by fives armed. So a lot of people think we just left Egypt, we stumbling over each other. When you read the first, when you read the beginning chapters of Exodus, we had officers. It says the officers of the children of Israel complained unto Pharaoh that you made our you made a stink in the eyes of Pharaoh, man. So you had officers. You had are we it's not like we was a bunch of damn niggas in Egypt, man. Right. We had elders, right. we had ancient men. There's, um, I believe in Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, it goes more in depth of the lifestyle we lived in Egypt. Right? You got a precept? No, you got it. Con, so that word harness, we went up ranked by five. So just visualize us marching out of Egypt in order. Right? So you can read on in Exodus 13. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Right? And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, The Most High will surely visit you. And ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. Yeah, that's Jeremiah. It's like in Genesis chapter 50, 20 on down. Right, go on. And he took the journey from Sakaar and encamped in Ethel in the edge of the wilderness. And it's okay to look these places up, man. Don't just look these places up and say, ah, I mean, I don't know what that is, man. What's Ethel? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, where's, uh, what else? Um, Sakaar. No, look it up, man. This is your history, man. The white man knows all of his history, man. We dealt, remember we dealt with that Elamite and he knew his country, yeah. his street name, his address. He knows all of that, man. So, I mean, our people, we don't know that, man. You got to know how we left Egypt, man. It's all right to go into the map, go into the atlas and look up the exodus of Egypt, man, and see how we came south around the peninsula 
up into the land of the Moabites, crossed uh, Jericho, and then went up north and look into these things, man. Look at the military conquest of Joshua. How did Joshua invade, right? How he separated the Canaanites south from the north and attacked them, man. Look up the maps to see what your forefathers have done. Don't just read Exodus and you're just thinking about what the manna tastes like, man. That's off, man. A coriander seed and it's white. God damn, what is that, man? You're ignoring all of the, the, the importance of the scriptures. So read on, King. Verse now, 21. Salakia. That's all right. We're just going to pull up a map. We don't got to pull it up, right? We're short on time. But let's read on. Verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Right. So meaning the Lord had a what? What was in the, over them? A huge chariot. Not just a small chair. Give me Exodus 40 and 36. And when it says a pillar of fire, it's talk. That's what the so-called white man calls a tractor beam. That beam of light to lead them in the wilderness. But Moses, he just wrote it as a pillar of fire. Like you'll see similitudes. Jacob's ladder, pillar of fire, of the fruit of the tree. These things aren't literal, but they're written with an ancient mind. Is Moses going to say a tractor beam? Uh, he, he doesn't know what that is. Right? That's like giving this, uh, this iPhone to, damn, Abraham. How is Abraham going to describe the iPhone? Is he going to say that's a touchscreen, LED, right? Three cameras, deluxe. Yeah, you're going to say it's a box of damn lightning or something, huh? Like that's a box. I've seen this big box of lightning. Box of mirror. Yeah, box of mirror and, and lights, man. And it was men's faces, but I knew not. And then you get them, then when you get what he's describing, you got to figure out what the, okay. He saw in the future, what could he be describing? Right. And through process of elimination and through discernment and prayer, you say, okay, he was talking about an iPhone. Right. That's the prophecy. So certain prophecies, you got to understand what our forefathers were looking at. So what you got? Oh, no, no, this ain't nothing. All right, so let's, um, Oh, Exodus 40 and 36. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 40 and verse 36. Yeah. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. So when this chariot hovered above the tabernacle and went up to the sky, that was a clear indicator to let us know, pack up your tents. It's time to keep marching. Right, go on. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. So sometimes a cloud may rest there for days, for weeks, for months. It wasn't just an every day, go to sleep and wake up, then it rests. No, sometimes that cloud rested upon the tabernacle for days and days and days. Go on. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire was on it by night. We didn't have flashlights, a generator. Let me see the back of your phone, turn that flashlight back. We didn't have that, man. Huh? We didn't have that helmet with the light on it so we can see where we're going. All we had was that chariot, man. It kept the wild beast away. It gave us lights so we could pack it. You're in the middle of a desert, man. How are you able to see? Right? And you have billions of people that are out there, man. So you have to have this huge light coming down so we can see what we're doing. Go on. In the sight of all the house of Israel. No, only three tribes saw the light. In the sight of all the house of Israel. So this chariot had to be almost the size of like a small city or something like that, man. Go on. Throughout all their journeys. That's why Yahweh Shah flies upon a great mountain, huh? That's right. That's that huge great mountain. Let's get that in um second Ezra chapter 13. Right? That's the mountain uh, that the Lord flew upon, huh? Like 13 and 3. 5. 13 and 4. Yeah, start, start at 3. Alright, uh, get straight to the point six. It's the book of Second Edges, chapter 13 and verse 6. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain. So Yahweh Shah had a chariot so large it looked like a mountain, man. Huh? It takes people months to climb mountains, man. Huh? People plan their whole life to climb Mount Everest, man. Huh? And they don't even make it. So you couldn't even make it to the top of this chariot, man. Huh? Read on. And flew up upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven. And I could not. Right. Meaning Ezra thought an actual mountain was taken off the earth because he saw it in the sky. Then he realized, hold on, that's not an actual mountain. That's a spaceship huh? that the Lord flies upon that was upon our forefathers by day and by night. Go to Isaiah 4 and 4. 
And that's going to happen all over again. Huh? Right? When we're in this second wilderness, when we're uh, uh, in the kingdom, you're going to have these chariots, man. And you're not just going to try to guess, okay, is that a chariot? Or is that? You're going to know what it is, man. You're going to see the works of the Lord in his perfected glory. So bring that up. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning, and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place. Upon, no, just the tabernacle. Every dwelling, dwelling place, place. Upon every dwelling place. Of Mount Zion, of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies. A cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night. Right. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. You see that? So in that wilderness and in the kingdom, you're going to have a chariot over every dwelling place, man. In the Bible. So just like in the days of old, it's going to come back on the earth again. That same cloud by day and pillar by night. So go on. Verse 6. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. Right. Now, rather, that's going into you being able to be in that chariot when it gets inclement and bad out there, then the Lord can take you down. Or We don't know how it's going to be, man. right? That's that place of refuge. But let's go back to Exodus um, 13 to 20. It's the book of Exodus chapter 13 and verse 20 and they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped in Edom in the edge of the wilderness and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of the fi of fire by night from before the people right verse Look at Exodus chapter 14 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pi Harath between the Gulf and the sea over against Baal Zephon before it shall be encamped by the sea. And you wouldn't understand this again unless you go into the geography until you look it up so you can know what's going on. All right, go on. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them in. Right. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have... Let Israel go from serving. Yeah, why do we let them go and serve their God? Let's go get them back and bring them captive. Go on. And he made ready his chariot. And he what? And he made ready his chariot. Right. And took his people with them. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. Quick precept. Go to Wisdom of Solomon. 19 and 1. Right? I'm so there. I'm there. Okay, come on. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19 and verse 1. As for the ungodly, Wrath came upon them without mercy unto the end, for he knew before what they would do. The How, the, meaning the most high, when you read Wisdom of Solomon uh, 17, 18, and 19, they go hand in hand with Exodus. You have to read. If you want a more understanding of the plagues and the destruction, you have to read Wisdom of Solomon. Or you're going to be lost. You're not going to really know how in-depth that darkness was. You're not going to know really... Uh, uh, um, that what the deliverance is about without reading the 18th chapter, the death of the firstborn, and them drawing after us in the 19th chapter. So they go hand in hand as you and your household read these chapters, go back into Wisdom of Solomon too, right? Like, and a quick point, like reading the Gospels. Yep. You can't just read Matthew. You gotta read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to paint the whole picture. Come. Verse two. So how, it's like you read one again, Baba Gisha. Verse one. How for the ungodly Wrath came upon them. The ungodly are the Egyptians. Wrath came upon them. Without mercy. Right. Unto the end. For he knew before what they would do. The Most High knew what they would do. He programmed them to go off. He made the Egyptians to be destroyed. It's not like the Most High said, oh, oh, they're coming after my people. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, 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 what do you think we should do? No, that's madness, man. 
You got a preset? Nah. nah I had a well, preset. How that having given them lead to depart, he sent them hastily away that they would repent and pursue them. Right. Got a piece about them. For whisk they were yet mourning and making lamentation. While they were mourning for the firstborn being dead and while they had tears in their eyes. At the graves of the dead, they added another foolish device. Right. And pursued them as fugitives whom they had entreated to be gone. Read. For the destiny whereof they were worthy. So you have destiny in the Bible, man. You got people say, I don't believe in fate. I don't believe in destiny. Well, it's in the Bible, man. Everybody has a destiny, man. Right? Everybody has a, a, a set lot that the Moses has programmed them for, man. Hey, the wife that you have, it was your destiny to meet that woman, man. Hey, it was destiny for all of us to be in this room right now, man. It was all at a point in time, the Lord said, I want all these spirits from the four corners of the earth to come here. Man. Who would have thought, man? They've been brothers from Seattle, damn DC, Indiana, Detroit, in the damn same room, man. Reading about the Passover. Think about it five years ago. What, 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 what are you talking about? Somebody said, what do you see yourself five years from now? In Baltimore, wearing a Mitri, right? In a, in a building across from Club Lust, reading about the Passover, man. Nobody would have expected it, but that's the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. That's his mercy. So there's no reason for us to damn brag and boast and uh, uh, ego trip and get proud when the Mosai set this thing up, man. And it's destiny for the Egyptians. We're about to read about it. For the destiny were of, they were worthy, drew them unto this end, and made them forget the things that they had already happened. The most I could have had it happen to you, man. Mm. How you go off and forget the judgment and keep going off. He, they forgot all of the plagues. Imagine that the Lord just took that memory out of their mind. So they don't even know what's happening. They just see their slaves on a go. They don't know the water was turned to blood. They don't remember the, the, all of the, uh, the locusts, the flies. That they just complete, they said, our, they woke up in the trance, our slaves are gone. And the Lord programmed that, man. Huh? Go on. That they might fulfill the punishment which was wanting to their torments. Right. And that the people might pass a wonderful way, but they might find a strange death. For the whole creature in its proper kind was fashioned against a new servant, the peculiar commandment that were given unto them that thy children might be kept without hurt. Right, meaning the Most High destroyed the Egyptians with a strange punishment, drowned them in the Red Sea, man. And for everybody that doesn't believe in the Bible, you have scholars to this day who can verify that the chariots of Pharaoh are still at the bottom of the sea, man. That's right. To this day, man, people know about uh, Tutmos III, uh, uh, Ramesses, and all these different Pharaohs. But you have all of these men who walk up the camp with their hands folded, and what do they say, King? What do they say? I don't believe that. Or they say, who wrote that book? <laughs> who wrote that book? Anytime somebody fold their hands and do this at camp, you already know what time it is. You already know, they walk up, who wrote that? Or, or, or they'll ask this. What version is that? Yeah, what version is that? <laughs> what version is that? <laughs> what version? You and you'll say the King James, and they say King James, and you already know it's go time. And you got your precepts. That's the white man. You got your precepts lined up. But how can they? How can they? They can't dispute archaeology, right? right? They can't dispute a uh, uh, bas relief paintings, anthropology. They can't dispute the findings that even a so-called white man has found, right? They found Moses' ark. You said what? Yeah, they found Noah's ark on Mount Ararat, man. Kabash does all of the cold cuts on WFI artifacts, man. All of the artifacts that prove and validate kings and men in the Bible are out present in your modern day museum. So Jake does no scholarship and they have no type of uh, a will to seek knowledge, man. They just hearsay scoff, right? So read on, it's two more in that. As namely a cloud shadowing the camp and they were slaki and where water stood before dry land appeared and out of the Red Sea a way without impediment and out of the violent stream a green field. Many of the most I led them through the Red Sea and to pastures. Go on. Uh, where through all the people went that were defended with thy hand seeing thy marvelous strange wonders. Thy what? Thy marvelous strange wonders. What is going through the Red Sea? Thy marvelous strange wonders. That's strange man. When did Allah do that for the Ishmaelites, man? Right. 
When did Buddha do anything for the Chinese man? <laughs> what did Buddha do besides sit down, huh? And wax fat? <laughs> what have these heathen gods done for them, huh? Hey, there is nobody like Yahweh Bashim right. Abishai, man. Right. There is nobody like Yahweh Bashim Abishai, like man. Right. You can't compare the Lord part of the Red Sea, man. Right. For us to be delivered from slavery, man. Right. From a nation that he created to be destroyed, man. Right. I know Kabash had one real quick. I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to go on to the point that, you know, in the second wilderness, the same thing is going to occur. Right? They go see all the plagues hitting Babylon. They go see their nation fall and they go still pursue to attack us. Right? Give me that in uh, Ezekiel 38 and 8. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38 and verse 8. Right? After many days, thou shalt be visited. Right? In the latter years. Right. So, like, so we talking about the latter years, the latter times. Right? Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Right. And is gathered out of many people. Right. That's talking about the children of Israel. This is after we get delivered from the four corners. Read. Against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste. Right. But is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Right. Read. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Right now, this is talking about Gog, Magog, Persia, like all the the nations that's in cahoots with the um with the uh the Russians, right? right. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. Right, just like the Egyptians, they thought an evil thought. They right. said, you know what? Let's get the slaves back, man. Right, right. We and then like you just read in Wisdom of Solomon, they was mourning. They looking at the firstborn. They looking at their land destroyed. They right. kind of got mad, man. Right, so we got to get them back. Man. Right, we right. Get them back. Right, because that's how they go be. They go see this so called alien invasion. You gotta think. You gotta be realistic. An alien invasion. You don't think the nations will just go just keep fighting? No, they go stop fighting. Look at this alien threat and attack. And that's that's when they go get destroyed though. Just like the Egyptians, they try to attack us in the Red Sea. He closed them up and they drown. Huh? That's right. right. Keep reading. Verse eleven. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Right. Because we just go be there in the wilderness. Right. The northern part of is we just go be in the wilderness. Nothing's gonna be built. We just go be there. Right. Delivered from the four corners. And they go say we finna attack them, man. We finna take get take them out. When we read Second Edges thirteen one on down, you see the result. They got burnt up by Yahweh Shah and the chariots. Right. So that's all I wanted to bring out. Come. Uh, to let me back on what Kabbalah said. Can we go to Second Edges thirteen and eight? Right. Because that pride, man. There's gonna be a lot of pride in these other nations, man. Where they're going to see Yahweh Shai, the chariots, the thousands on top of hundreds of thousands or millions of angels up there. They're going to be terrified, right? But the pride of the so-called white man is not going to let him uh, subdue or bow down to uh, a so-called black man. Right. Right? You got it, Michael, buddy. It's the book of Second Edges, chapter 13 and verse 8. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid. So they was terrified. Right, everybody's gonna be terrified when them chariots come, man. Right, right. Even the elect gonna be scared, man, because they don't know their end. Right. And yet there's fight. Yet they still wanted to fight the Lord, man. Right. How wicked you gotta be to want to kill your Creator, man. Right. But all this was written from the foundation. Right. Can you get uh, Mark four and twenty two, Robert Shaw? Right. There's nothing here from the Lord. Right. The Lord already had it written from the beginning to the midst to the end of time, so everything was going to work out. Right? It's the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 22. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Right, so there's nothing that's kept secret, man. The things that are going to happen uh, tomorrow, next year, if we're here, right, they're already written. That's Amos 3 and 7, right? Well, let's go to Amos 3 and 6. Love you, Sean. Well, let's bring that up. Well, it was already written and it's known because the prophets have let it be known. Right? It's the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Right. Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Right. Surely the Lord God will do nothing 
but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Right, so the prophets have gave us an in-depth breakdown, uh, uh, step by step by step, how everything is going to happen, man. Right, we know that the uh, other nations are going to be fighting in World War III. They're going to stop. They're going to see the elect get beamed up. They're still going to want to fight, man. They're still going to want to destroy us, man. So everything is already going to be written from the foundation. Come I can give Revelation chapter 16 and verse 19. Right. And, and like the brothers are saying, these are the same plagues all over again, man. You read about that in Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 16. Book of uh, Exodus chapter 9 and verse 23 all the way down. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 19. Bring that up. It's the book of Revelation chapter 16 and verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts. Right, Babylon, complete destruction. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before the Most High to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away. And the mountains were not found. For all these nations, they're going to bow down. They're going to be scared. All hell's going to be breaking loose. Read. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed the most high. They did what? And men blasphemed the most high. So when all hell breaking loose, and, and, and all hell is breaking loose, you got these nations cussing at the Lord while he's coming in the air, man. Wow. And that's wicked as hell, man. It shows you the pride of the so-called white man. You literally gonna fight against your creator in, in the damn air, man, with all of these different uh, chariots right above you, right? Shooting down laser beams. They're still gonna think that they can overcome the most high. Right, we don't? And men blaspheme the most high because- And I wasn't talking about they were saying stop. We've had enough. Get out of here. Right, they're speaking unspeakable things and witchcraft, man. Huh? Probably throwing up curses. Right, we don't? Because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. And I want to uh, land me back off of Wisdom of Solomon in the 19th chapter and go to the book of Joshua, chapter 11 and verse 20. Because the Lord will make you mad, man, and blind your mind, right? And we see all of these plagues, and the so-called white man knows that, but yeah, he's still going to fight against the Mosai. Joshua, chapter 11 and verse 20. It's the book of Joshua, chapter 11 and verse 20. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts. Right, so the Lord hardened their hearts, man. And the Lord will bug you out, man. Make you feel like something is wrong when it's right, right when it's wrong. He'll send you a delusion. The same way he did Pharaoh. Read. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly. So the Lord only blinded their minds just to destroy them, man. And the Lord blinded a lot of men's minds in his truth just to destroy them and make them a public example, man. That's plain, man. The Lord will build you up just to tear you down to show his might. That's not always talking about the enemies, man. It's talking about our own people. It's a lot of prideful men that came against Moses. It's a lot of proud men like Thaddeus in the book of Acts, the fifth chapter. It's a lot of men all throughout the Bible, through pride and preeminence of glorifying themselves, the Lord chopped them down. Read on. And Nebuchadnezzar, right? Read on. And that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them, as the Lord commanded Moses. Oh, you got it. That's right. That's right. So let's go back to that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, King. Can we get the book of Revelation 9 and 20, Bob Bisha? I was thinking of that. All right. All right. So, uh, so let me back on oh, what the brothers are bringing up, man. Right, because they all hell is going to break loose, man. Right, that uh, men are, are going to see the chariots, man, the plagues, right, darkness, a death, man. A now hey, Esau, he, he sees his, his whole economy and society falling and crashing, man. Hey, but he's still proud, man. He, he's still puffed up, man. And he still thinks that, 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 that the Lord is going to have his kingdom endure forever, man. Right, so bring that out for me, King. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet. What the Lord said? And the rest, the rest of the men, men which were not, not killed, killed by these, these plagues yet. yet. Right? Repented not of the works of their hands. Right, right. All right, so, all right, so it, um, the nations, man, Esau, man, he's going to see a, all the plagues, man. Right, he, he, he's saying a, a, the, the death of, of, of his children, man. Right, he's saying that um that his so-called fertility rate is, is in a very, very low state, man. That, that there is more of them dying than, than they are being, being born and being, being produced, man. Right, and he's saying, right, that the so-called value of, of the so-called money falling, man. Right, right, and he's saying, right, the, uh, the, the, the literally a destruction, man, right, and, and the deterioration of the whole earth, man. Hey, but he's still puffed up in, in his power, man, and not gonna repent, read on. 
that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Right, right, which neither can see nor walk. Right? So and these nations are still, right, they, they see the Lord coming back, right, in, in his power, right, in, in his glory, right, right, and saying that everything man cast down, right, hey, but they're still uh, going to look and, and, and worship these idols, right? They, you got men who are still, they, they're going to see the Lord come back on, on, on his mighty church, right, a hey, destroying city, right, and still, and it's still call upon Allah, right, hey, it's still call upon, upon Brahma, right? a Buddha, right, hey, Allah, Allah, right, hey, 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 a Caesar, right, right, and all, it all has a money and gold and finances, except for a repent and return it back to the most high. Right, we don't. Verse 21. Neither repented they of their murders. Neither what? Neither, Neither repented, repented they of their murders. murders. Right, right. Uh, just like in, in, in the time of Exodus, right? Right, the, the Egyptians, right? Right, the Lord, he, he smoked, right? That the Egyptians firstborn, right? The cattle, right? It, it, it destroyed their land, right? Hey, but, but what? Hey, did they still uh, decided to follow us and, and try to chase us hey, through the Red Sea, man. Right, we don't. Nor of their sorceries, right? Nor of their fornication. Nor of their thefts. Right, and nor of their thefts, man. And, and, and who is the more the most proud of these, man? Right? That Esau, man, right? right. who does nothing but steal, rape, rob, murder, man, a fornicate, a, a, a set up of idols, man, and commit all types of a spiritual sorcery and fornication, man. Right, God, God, that's right, man. So these days are coming back on the earth, right? Go back to Exodus chapter 14, God. It's the book of Exodus chapter 14 and verse 8. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. Right. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea besides Pihah-Herod before baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They did what? And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. So here they stuck between what they call a rock and a hard place, man. Right? The water's approaching. They can't cross the water. And they, they stuck in straits, man. Right? Between the Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. Go on. Verse 11. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with, thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. See that? They'd rather die in slavery than die being a free man. Wow. All right, that sounds like our people, man. They'd rather die in bondage than die being free, man. Please, master, don't leave the plantation. All right, please, please, we gotta, we gotta leave. We, no, 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 maybe we shouldn't go, man. Maybe it's not that bad here, man. That's awesome. You know what I mean? We pick cotton and we got land and maybe we got a house to stay in. You wanna ruin this for us? Don't mess this up for us. Like, I got a point. That's what they be saying, man. You gonna mess this up for us. Me and my family, we just got here, man. You wanna, you wanna mess all this up, man? And it, it was killing people, man. How many slave rebellions never happened because they got murdered in the night, man? Or they got strangled, or something happened, man. I had a point to make too. Harriet Tubman has said uh, she could have freed more slaves if they knew they were slaves. Yeah. Because our people got like a slave like mentality, man. Like some folks they say it wasn't a uh, uh, slavery needed to happen. Right. Right. It needed to happen because we were just Africans swinging from vines. Man. Yeah. You had right. Jake. Jake say that on the highways and byways, man. Hey, uh, what was that Ben Carson? Is that the coon? Yeah. yeah. Ben Carson said that slavery was one of the best things that happened to us, man. Wow. He said because it gave us technology. Wow. Right? He said, now you don't have to cook people in pots anymore, and y'all don't have to worry about swinging from branches, man. He said, now you have iPhones. Just be grateful. That's so, so, so men like that are going to be destroyed, man. Right. Slavery was the best thing that happened <laughs> to us, so now we have iPhones. <laughs> That's madness, man. We got all the technology anyway, man. Right, and, and our one more point. And our technology supersedes a damn iPhone, man. Right. The white man don't have urine thumu, man. He don't have a mercy seat. The Lord can't just t come talk to him. Base technology. He has base, he has real low technology. 
We have chariots. You said what? Primal. Yeah, primal. Yeah, he got, he's, a old, he's a primitive man. Right. You know? We have advanced Arctic. The chariots, like I always say, they were made before Genesis 1 and 1. And that technology, there's no account of the chariots being made. But it still supersedes whatever the so-called white man got, man. That's right. So, I mean, what is he going to do against the Lord, man? The Lord made you, man. You're going to use the weapons, the low-level weapons the Lord gave you and fight against the most high. <laughs> Only the Lord can set something like that up. Amos, you got something? Oh, right. I got something. Oh, oh, you're sloppy. Come on. You can get Numbers chapter 14 and verse 1. Come It's the book of Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. Right, and that's not just a thousand jakes, man. They, you know how many children of Israel was in the wilderness, man? That cry was exceedingly great, man. Imagine if everybody in here that said, cut off the light. That uproar would have got, it would have been loud as hell. Right. This, it's no more than what, 60 people in here, man? Imagine all of the congregation lifting up their voice crying, man, and weeping. Read. And the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses. And that's a lot to take on for one man. Everybody murmuring against one man, man. Read on. And against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, would the most high that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? Right, oh God, that we have died in the wilderness. Oh God, we have died in the land of Egypt. Right, like everything falling on Moses and Aaron, man. Right? Read on. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the Hey, the Lord. Lord saved you, man. What the hell are you talking about? Wherefore did the Lord bring us into this land? That's off. And you got to have faith when you're going through the fire, man. Everything not going to go your way the way you want it to. Right, read on. To fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us to return into Egypt. They want to go back into captivity with their backs getting whooped in, man. Picking up brick and straw than to have faith and carry on in the wilderness with the Lord, man. That's the mentality of our people. That's why we say all the time, a lot of people, they're going to be bowing down and going to the FEMA camps when they're in the wilderness. Mm. They're going to see them bright lights. They're going to know food is in there. They're going to know bread is in there. And they're going to then bow their heads. And then they're going to go like this to the so-called white man. And be willingly a prisoner, man, instead of having faith in the Lord. Read on. Hold on. This is the point I wanted in verse 4. Verse 4. And they said one to another. They said one to another. Let us make a captain. And let us return into Egypt. Right. They damn near said, man, forget Moses, man. We're going to thrust Moses out, make ourselves a captain, and lead head on into Egypt, man. And that's off as hell. Read on. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. They did what? And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly. And that's humbleness and meekness. Imagine the Lord talking to you firsthand. You know the way to go. You have faith. You mighty. You handpicked and you chosen. And you still bow down and put your face on the ground, man, before the whole congregation. Read. All the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephthun, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel saying the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land if the Lord delight in us then he will bring us into the land and give it us all right you can rest right there you got it Con. that's right so let's go back to the book of Ex uh, Exodus oh, yeah, I want the, uh, oh, we got a precept about uh, the technologies we had in the ancient world man let's go to uh, second Chronicles chapter 26 and we can start at 14 right because we were doing stuff 3,000, 4,000 years ago that wasn't even heard of at the time, man. We are setting up war machines. We are setting up things that nobody could have even thought of in that time. Right. Right? While the so-called uh, white man was using sticks and rocks. Right? We had yeah. machine guns in the ancient world. Yeah, they say the so-called white man um, finally found out what fire was, man. Right. <laughs> it's like he discovered fire, man. It's a caveman. Hey, man, Thousands of years ago, he finally found out what that thing was, man. <laughs> but he's supposed to be some top guy, man. Right. This is madness, man. You got your point? Yeah, they just say that we taught them how to bathe. Yeah, we taught them how to bathe. Read Job the 30th chapter, man. Right. Stop looking at the so-called... He just got in power, man. Uh -huh. Don't let the suit and the tie and the shaved beard fool, fool you, man. He literally has no understanding, and whatever he gets, he gets it from the spiritual demon Satan. Right? right? But you got English.
Second Chronicles 26 and 14. John, you start at 14. This is the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 26 and verse 14. And Uzziah. So Uzziah was the king over Judah, right? Right, Uzziah, he was a, he was a good king, but he was high-minded of himself. Right, so, you know, you may do certain acts and it starts to go to your head. Right, you start to feel yourself. Right, we're going to read about that in a second. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and habergeons and bows and slings to cast stones. Right. And he made in Jerusalem engines. He made engines in Jerusalem. How do how you make engines thousands of years ago? Right, that's mind blowing. Right? Invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones with all. So he had like a Gatling gun in the ancient world. Right. Shooting wow. arrows at the Edomites. Just going straight through them, rocks. Right, that's that's amazing right there. Yeah, automatic. Right, we had such wise uh, forefathers that they built these things to protect themselves on top of garrisons, on top of towers, right? And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. Right, so his name spread out far and, and, and wide. Well, that was his downfall right there, man. He started filling himself, lit the incense in the temple, became right. started looking like a white on. man. Yeah, I got a quick preset real fast. First Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 50. Right, the line me back on what the brother was bringing up. First Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 50. It's the book of First Mac Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 50. So the king of Bethsura set and set a garrison there to keep it. As for the sanctuary, he besieged it many days. And he set there artillery with engines and instruments to cast fire and stones. To cast fire and stones. Right, like a, like a, uh, somebody would uh, manually pull back a slingshot. They had them things automatically doing it for them in the ancient world, man. Way before their time. Read on. And pieces to cast darts and slings. Darts, slings. It says artillery and engines, but that's past our imagination. It's not talking about one big old piece of a tree. They chopped the tree down, then just carved out a hole and put a rock in there, man. No, our forefathers were intelligent, man. Read on. Whereupon they also made engines. They made engines against their engines and held them battle a long season. A what? A long a season. A long season, man. So those artillery and those engines were gone for a long season. And battle wasn't for 35 minutes. It wasn't for two hours. And they would fight all day in the ancient world, man, with a lot of bloodshed. And it took those machines at a high level to cast those darts all day. You got it. So Lockyer, like this is in captivity. Right. Right. Imagine if we was in our own land, the stuff that we had, man, right. the defense that we had. That's miraculous, man. Right. That's right. I had a quick precept, and I wanted to point on that. It said they cast fire, man. That's not like a damn uh, flamethrower or right. something, man. Right. 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 right in the ancient world. But I wanted this precept. Get First Kings six and seven. Going into the might of our forefathers and how they was building this stuff, man. Right. Right. Because when the damn um, Edomites when they building this stuff, you hear all the the noise and the hammers and stuff. Right. Check this out. Bring this up. It's the book of 1 Kings, chapter 6 and verse 7. Right. And the house, when it was in building. Right, this is Solomon building his home and building the temple of the Lord, right? Was built of stone, made ready before it was brought uh, thither. Right, so they basically carved out the stones. It was perfectly measured before they brought it into the temple. Right, right? So that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house. While it was in building. Right, so basically it was like a big puzzle. So imagine the precision you gotta have to cut something so perfect that you just put it in and it slide perfectly in. Esau don't do that with they buildings, right. man. Uh, right, you hear all the noise and uh, they kinda uh, hammer, they kinda uh, mess uh, up, gotta redo it. Yeah. And no, uh, our forefathers, they kinda, and this was all That's gold, deep. man. Yeah. That's yeah. deep, man. They cut it, made it perfect, and kinda put these stones in, like, and it just was a puzzle. You didn't hear no tools. So, like, a quick point. They got, you driving to work, they got that big old wrecking ball, just spirit, he in there drunk. Right. In the joystick, <laughs> trying to figure out how to swing that yeah. damn ball, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you said they in there drunk, man, the damn, uh, damn, what's the, uh, the construction work? Yeah. Smoking a damn cigarette, man. Yeah. All right, our, ten years. Was, <laughs> our forefathers was mighty, man. That was, that was all I wanted to bring out, though. Come on, so let's go back to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the book of Exodus, chapter 14 and verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, 
and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Right. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. What the Lord say? The Lord, the Lord shall, shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. peace. You say, you're going to shut the hell up. Man. You're going to see the most side. I don't want to hear a damn thing. Man. Go on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Right. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on a dry ground through the midst of the sea. Right. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, upon his horsemen. Right. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten the honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Right, so this is what the deal is. The Most High created the Egyptians to destroy them to get his name magnified. Go on. And the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So the chariot that was in front of them, leading them, moved and went behind them. Go on. And it came... And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by the night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. So the Lord divided them with great darkness and gave us light, like in these last days. Go on. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. And the waters were divided. Go on. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Yeah, they show you that in the, uh, the movie Prince of Egypt. Huh? Uh, yeah. And they walk through the Red Sea and you see the fish is still in there and the lightning and all of the wonderful works of the Most High. Huh? This would be one of the top scenes to ever witness. Huh? In the entire Bible. Huh? Walking through the Red Sea. Go on. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them to the midst of the sea. And why would you do that? <laughs> why would a normal man do that, man? But it shows you that the Lord put a spirit on him, man. Right, go on. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord look unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Right, and, and they were up all night, like we were talking about on the Passover. You're gonna be up all night, man. Our forefathers was up all night. They was up all night, now it's in the morning time. The sun is up. So they didn't get no sleep, no rest. They on the move, man. Just like the apostles, just like Hamashiach Yahweh man. Right, so the Lord, what the Lord is doing, he's about to damn manipulate the elements and destroy the uh, chariot wheels off the Pharaoh. Go on. Verse 24, and it came to pass, that, uh, 25. 25, come huh? And took off their chariot wheels. And did what? And took off their chariot wheels. Nobody knows how he did. Only the Most High knows, right? They driving the chariots, and then, like, the damn force rips the damn chariot wheels off of them, man. Huh? Go on. That they drave them heaven, so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. And when you flying in a chariot, and it's stopped, and the wheels come off, you flying off that thing, man. Huh? You flying and you rolling, man. A lot of people probably died off of that, man. They probably going like 50, 60 miles per hour. Got trampled. Yeah, got trampled. The wheels pop off. Pharaoh, read that. You can read that in uh, Maccabees, man. Second Maccabees, not Antiochus. Damn chariot came and he busted himself up, man. That's the physical effect of a chariot, man. Go on. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their, ch upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared. When the morning appeared, right? And the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. So the waters beginning to close in on them, and they see it closing, and they trying to escape. But you can't escape from the most high, man. And drowning isn't a, uh, a smooth way to go out, man. They say drowning is the worst way to die. You said what? Burning yeah, burning and drowning, right? And that's how the Lord is taking these nations down, man. Because you drown, drown, you're trying to survive. 
think you got a chance to escape. Right. You slowly <laughs> choke out, then you out of there, man. So go on. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horses and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. No, there was a lot of them. There remained not so much as one of them. No, they, they made it through the Red Sea. There remained not so much as one of them. Right? But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel. What the Lord say? Thus the Lord saved Israel. What the Lord say? Thus the Lord saved Israel. Read it again. Thus the Lord saved Israel. Read. That the day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Dead upon the seashore, man. Damn, a hundred of them just dead, washed up. Right. Wow. There's, there's, there's nothing better than seeing. Give me that, so right, twenty-five or seven bucks a shot, man. Right? Uh. right? There's nothing better than seeing your enemy dead, man. Right. You know, people say uh, uh, there's good white men and good Africans and good so and so, and and oh, and we always say, we always say, the only good white man is a what? It's a dead, dead, it's a dead, dead, dead white man, man. man. That's right. That's the only good one, man. That's the only good Egyptian. If he's dead, man. That's right. Or if he's in slavery, man. That's right. Right, right. right bring that up. Sirach 25 and 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. Right. And the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. He that liveth to see the fall of his enemy, man. That's right. And that's not speaking about the enemy of your own nation. Right. That's speaking about these damn devils, man. Right. Right. And we're not going to be mad when Esau's taken out, man. Right. We're not going to be crying because McDonald's got blown up by a missile, uh, man. Right. Or your, your damn uh, Rite Aid and the damn uh, uh, grocery store, man. Right. Right. And all your, you lost all of your Jordans, man. Right. Right. We're not going to give a damn about this, man. Right. Right. So the Lord said, he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Go back to Exodus chapter 14. So long, I can make a quick point. Come. Right, on Google, you can look this up. I typed in, how long does it take to drown? And it says, what are the six stages of drown? Damn. Whoa. The first one is struggle to keep the air ray clear of the water. So you're sitting up there, you're struggling, and you're fighting. Right? The second, it says, it's on our submission and breath holding. So now that you're fighting and you can't do it, you just start holding your breath. It's that aspiration of water, unconsciousness. Then you slip into cardiac respiratory arrest. <laughs> Then death and unable to revive. Damn. damn. Catch a damn heart attack, man. Damn. Holding your breath and your chest explodes inside of you, man. Damn. Then you open your mouth and your last breath, your lungs, damn, drown up. Oh, they damn. slip out and then you're dead. It wasn't no coming back from there. You crossing a sea. Yeah, yeah, you out. You know bro. how big a sea is, man? Right. Yeah, That's right. huge, right. man. Yeah. They're yeah. trying to run. They're trying to escape, man. <laughs> I, I would love to see that, <laughs> man. You want to run from in the middle That's of a sea. Going. Push each other out of the way. Right, right. Damn. You said what? I said, well, while injured. Yeah, they injured. Yeah, they fell they fell out the cherries, man. You just gotta accept it. <laughs> let's let's read uh uh 30 again. Damn. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 14 and verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Right. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And with that, Kwam Yashallah! Kwam Yashallah! Kwam Yashallah! Kwam Yashallah! Kwam Yashallah!